for Ohio State, it's on to Michigan. Got a gritty win on the road, 43-30 over Maryland. It was a dogfight. I mean, they were down at half 10 to 13. They weren't running the ball super effectively, only 28 yards in the first half on the ground and forced a recalibration period from this Ohio State offense. And we've seen it a couple times. We've seen them have to gather themselves after taking a punch. And what this says to me about this Ohio State program in a game like this in November where you got to go on the road and nobody really wants to, you know, go, I'll, I'll rephrase that. You learn, rather, who really wants to play physical kind of football, who wants to be in these kind of tough games. And Ohio State proved yet again to me and I think to the rest of the country that there's no fake toughness in them. This whole, hey, we're a new Ohio State team, we're going to play tough, we're going to be gritty, like, you do that against Notre Dame, that's fine, it's week one. Do it when your body's beat up. Do it towards the last couple weeks of the season. Do it in a look-ahead spot where you have your arch nemesis waiting for you on the other side of that game. That was a tough win by Ohio State last night. That was a, a win that I think cemented yet again. This is a tough team. This is a different team that we saw a year ago go up to Ann Arbor in 2021. Really quick note, I'm J.D. Pakel. This is The Hard Count. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, we would love to have you. Also, follow me on the social channels, at J.D. Pakel on Twitter and on Instagram. Stay tuned to the end of this thing because we've got a little announcement that I think you Buckeye fans will want to hear. All right? I was really impressed by the way that, like I said, this Ohio State team took a punch. Because what did we say all week long about Maryland? The spread is what the spread is for a reason. Maryland is very much not consistent. But with that being said, Maryland is dangerous. They had some things, especially on the perimeter and at the quarterback position, that could potentially give Ohio State trouble. And credit Maryland, scored 30 points. They came with a great game plan. They gave Ohio State their very best punch. That's what happens when you wear the block O. I mean, that, that, that's the nature of being a Buckeye. You're going to get everybody's best punch within your conference. You're everybody's Super Bowl, all right? And so they took their best punch, collected themselves, and the trenches from Ohio State, the defensive trenches, rather, forced them to be one-dimensional in the end and were able to deliver the knockout punch. 293 yards passing from Maryland. Some cause for concern there. You got to sure that up because that'll be, I think, a really interesting hinge point when it comes to your game against Michigan next week. Did enough to win this game, but that's something that I promise you, Jim Knowles and company, they're going to make sure they sure that up and reassess that going forward. But Maryland, I want to make this clear, Maryland is not some slappy operation just kind of hucking the ball around like, they got some dudes on the outside. So that was a very legitimate test that Ohio State stood up to and got out of there with a W. I loved so much the way that they managed Dallin Hayden yesterday. Because Travion Henderson, you hope he's healthy and ready to rock and roll by Michigan. Mayan Williams, same thing. You hope that he is 100%. I don't have any intel as to what the injury situation is at the time of this recording. My feel is... You got Michigan, so I think if there's any percentage of their body they're able to give to that game, you will get it. But Dallin Hayden is a freshman, and it is looking more and more like he's going to have a role in the biggest game of the season against Michigan. And so what did Ryan Day do when they weren't running the ball effectively at half? Said, okay, well, we're going to make it more of a point to run the football. Like, don't get it twisted. We're getting out of this game with some confidence that we can move people against their will. Exactly what they did. Finished the game with 27 carries, 146 yards, three trips to the paint. Talk about a freshman growing up in front of your eyes. That was Dallin Hayden yesterday. And the reason why I love this management so much is because as a freshman, imagine if he'd got, let's just say, let's, let's call it 14 carries against Maryland. Solid number. It's good. But if you ask him to do something in that Michigan game, let's say he becomes the feature back in that Michigan game. I mean, the eyes get a little bit bigger. The spotlight is super bright. And that's a lot of weight to put on a freshman's shoulders. Now, it'll be a lot of weight on his shoulders when they get to that game. But I promise you, he will be more comfortable carrying that weight 
because they ask so much of him in this game. They loaded up his plate against Maryland because they know they will still need him to eat against Michigan. And I promise you, he will know what that feels like. He will have a better sense of having a full plate because of what they did in this game. And that's very wise by Ryan Day. And that is very, very strategic, empowering your depth, developing your depth, because personnel like Dallin Hayden will need to contribute against Michigan. So I love the way they managed him. I think he's going to have to play a role next week, especially with the injury bug being present in that running back room. But again, you hope they're all healthy to go. You also saw a little bit of the load shared in the past game. Because what have we been saying this week as well? Hey, Marvin Harrison Jr. is a dog. He may be the best receiver in the country. For my money, he's probably the most freakish player in the country. If you leave him one-on-one, he's a problem. Now, the reality is any defensive coordinator worth their salt probably won't leave Marvin Harrison Jr. one-on-one. Like, if you're leaving him one-on-one, you either have an elite defensive back or you're just not that bright. And... You know, I, I think Jesse Minter is a little bit more intelligent than to leave Marvin Harrison Jr. one-on-one. So if he gets double coverage, what other wide receiver can step up and make something happen? We were watching that in this game. Well, Mecca Egbuka was the leading receiver in this game. Was really pleased with the way that he emerged and the way that he won one-on-one battles. And the fact that he and C.J. Stroud were able to connect before the Michigan game gives me some encouragement that when, hey, Marvin Harrison Jr. does get doubled in the fourth quarter, Number two can make a play for you. And I promise you, there's more confidence in Emeka Egbuka today than there was yesterday. Not to say they didn't trust him. Of course they trusted him. But I promise you, he feels good having got his reps in a game like this and had so much success that carries over week to week. It just does, the way this whole thing works. So for him to share the load in the past game was really encouraging for what this past game will be in the coming weeks. Now here's what I loved. You Ready? It was a dogfight. It was back and forth. And they had a PAT blocked and run back for an extra two points. Like, it was, in every sense of the word, a look-ahead spot and a team in Maryland that could give you issues. And they did. But when it was time to win, when the chips were stacked and it was in the fourth quarter, you had Ohio State deliver a knockout punch. I mean, that's what it was. You had the big dog say, okay, there's a time to play. There's a time to win. And when it's time to win, we get it done. And that defensive line, that freakish defensive line, got after Tua Tagav- Talia Tagavaloa and forced a fumble, an interception, or whatever it was, a defensive score. I don't know how you want to quantify that because I don't know if the ball actually even touched the ground. Bottom line, huge pressure from the defensive line, forcing a defensive score, and that ended up being the backbreaker. Great teams rise to the occasion regardless of the spot. Because a much lesser team, a much less tough culture would have just been annoyed they're in a game with Maryland on the road before they got to play Michigan. They would have seen it as a chore, an inconvenience. Not that team. Not that Buckeye team that I saw take the field last night. So really impressed by them. And now they have earned the right to play an undefeated Michigan as an undefeated Ohio State team. They have earned all the pressure, all the spotlight that they're going to get in that game. It is 1 million percent warranted, and you can now talk about the Michigan-Ohio State game. Now, the announcement that I promised at the beginning of this video. There's no other way to say it. I am just extremely jacked up, fired up. Every single adjective you could use. The hard count is hitting the road. We will be in Columbus for Ohio State, Michigan, and it's going to be a time and a half. I mean, I can't tell you. I have watched this game on television my whole life. This rivalry is arguably the best in college football. It is arguably the best rivalry in sports. It is going to be a playoff kind of atmosphere. And I cannot wait to be a part of it and to get to experience firsthand this kind of special rivalry in the game day atmosphere that will be in Columbus. So we will see y'all there. It's going to be an absolute blast. Like I said, the party is rolling and it's rolling onto Columbus. So we're going to have a good time. Can't wait to see you all when we get over there. All right. So like I said, Nick Brake does real heavy lifting. You help drive the people show. Y'all are the people. So it's y'all show. Drive this whole operation by subscribing to the channel. We're going to keep the party rolling. We will see y'all next time. 
Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.